ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Elmore has the ball. Cross is over. For the record, there it is! John Elmore is the program all-time leading scorer. History for the senior. Jake Griffith on the call there. Welcome in to another edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. The Thundering Herd victorious last night in the first round of the CIT 78-73 to over IUPUI. John Elmore gets the record. He breaks Skip Henderson's all-time scoring mark. John Elmore now the all-time leader at Marshall University, and he's got another game at least Try to add to that point total. We'll take your phone calls later on this hour, but I got a lot to get into. And also coming up here in a few short minutes, we're going to hear from Cameron Farmer from Tri State MX. That is going to be happening this week. And guess what? The Thundering Herd, not the only exciting show in town. So we'll talk to Cameron about Tri State MX. I've got a lot to get into. So I guess we'll start at the top. Marshall. Winning the game, John Elmore breaking the record, C.J. Burks moving up the ladder. A lot happening yesterday in that Thundering Herd contest. And I'll say this, it was fun. It was a fun game. I don't know how many people were actually there compared to how many people were announced because I know the ticket number is usually tickets out. It looked pretty solid as a crowd, 3,725. So, on short notice, I thought that was a great crowd. I know some fans on social were thinking, oh, where were you heard fans? Hey, you got a couple of days to figure this out if you can make it happen on this game that all of a sudden you find out about. I thought 3,725 was a solid attendance. And, you know, now that you have a week to plan, because it's going to be next Tuesday, that's pretty much a lock. Tickets are going to go on sale soon. They'll make that announcement official over at HerdZone.com and on Marshall's social media accounts. Don't know the opponent just yet. I do know that Tuesday is pretty much the lock date because John Elmore was on with Hoppy Kirchival earlier this morning on Talk, talk Line on Metro News. And uh, we've got some sound bites from that. We'll hear that a little bit later on. And, of course, uh, John I thought was um, pretty candid in some of his comments. It was a great interview, and uh, you can hear the entirety of it over on WVMetroNews.com. But I've got some excerpts from it from Hoppy Kirchival's interview. We'll hear that a little bit later on. But I had a chance after the game to talk to Tavion Kinsey. Don't forget, C.J. Burks had an outstanding game, and Tavion Kinsey scored a lot of points as well. And here's my interview with Tavion last night during our postgame. It was definitely fun, definitely getting another chance to have a, a shot at something. You know, uh, we thank God every day for this. We pray before the games and, and things like that. But it, it was definitely fun just going out there trying to wow the crowd. I, I miss my, my favorite dunk that I tried to do, but just going out there, seeing John break that record, that was, that was most important tonight. Like, it was a lot of shots that I just wanted him to make. Like, I, I wanted him to get it early. But just seeing that, playing with a guy like that, playing with this team every single day, allowing me to come and play with these guys, it's like my family, away from family. So it's, it's, been, it's been great. How important has this week been, knowing that you would get an opportunity to go out there and play again? As you mentioned, you get to play for something. You advance to the next round. You also, in tonight's game, you get a trophy. So uh, already the herd's got a little more hardware. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely – it's definitely great just being able to keep playing, keep going. Um, but that, this is just one game down in the CIT, so I, I think we, we're going to take this game. We won this one, but now it's time to, like, we don't got really time to celebrate. I'm a guy who likes to, like, let's go, let's play again. I'm ready to, I'm ready to go. So. so safe to say this team's really focused on not just showing up and participating. You guys really want to win this. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Losing in the Conference USA um, tournament, we felt like, we should have been in the NCAA. We should have won that. But we get a chance right here, and it's God giving us another chance to redeem ourselves to win something. So I just say we're going to go out there every day to practice hard, and we play hard every, every single game. So, yeah. About this game tonight, this team was pretty feisty. You don't know what to expect when you get a tournament a bid. You don't know who your opponent's going to be until a couple days before. So. Really, what was about this team tonight that uh, they played really well? I like this team a lot. Um, very great program. Those guys don't quit. They don't quit. Like, 
going hard. We knew they was going to come at us the whole game, and I respect that the whole time because those guys didn't quit. Even when they were down, we had them down 10 early. They came back. They fought back. We knew watching film the guys wouldn't quit. They had some great shooters out there. Uh, they, I know they're missing a couple key guys that they uh, could have been there for them or, like, one key guy, but just going out there playing against them guys, they're, they're a very great program, like a very good team. So I respect them a lot. Now you focus on yourself for a few days before you find out in this tournament you get a second round by, so you guys are pretty, pretty rested until uh, the next game. No rest, no rest. We, I, I'll be probably in here tomorrow right after class to put up some shots. I know the guys are going to rest. I'm going to get my rest too, but it's just I, I'm kind of focused on right now, and I'm also focused on getting myself better for next year. So me, I'll probably be in here all week, but I know the guys are going to get some rest, so we're getting our head clear, and we're going to go out there and play hard the next game. Tavion Kenzie, I hope he's getting his rest. Um, you couldn't hear it there, but thankfully the microphone wasn't picking it up, but it was loud in there, not only during the game, after the game. It was a good atmosphere. I know the attendance mark might not be as big as you expect for a herd game, but that was a, a really rowdy crowd in there. It was a fun game. Those of you who could go and you did, I think you got a great show. Those of you who couldn't go, you missed a pretty good game. Hopefully you can come out to the next one again. Won't know the opponent until sometime down the line. There are several games to be played, and they'll reshuffle. There's no actual bracket here. It's going to be a reseed. Marshall gets a victory. Feels good about the next week. You get a week off. Why not? Good crowd showing up. Let's play some more of this stuff. When we come back from break, we're going to turn our attention slightly to another exciting sport. We've got from Tri-State MX, Cameron Farmer. He's going to join me on the program. We're going to talk about that. That's coming up, and we'll tell you more about it when we continue. Also, we'll hear from John Elmore. We'll hear from Dan D'Antoni. I've got some excerpts from Hoppy Kirchival's interview with John Elmore earlier this afternoon or earlier this morning on Talk Line on Metro News. So we've got all that coming up right here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. So to come, we will hear more from John Elmore. Also, we'll hear from C.J. Burks. We're going to hear from Dan D'Antoni. Big victory for the Thundering Herd last night, defeating IUPUI 78-73. to Welcome back to today's edition of The Drive. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Uh, we're going to turn our attention now. It's still exciting. It's not basketball, but it's just as exciting, probably more so. I have got Cameron Farmer joining us from Tri-State MX. Cameron, thanks for spending a few minutes with us this afternoon. How y'all doing today? Good. Very good. So um, basketball is pretty exciting right now, but uh, you're going to get people's adrenaline coming up real soon to probably another level with Tri-State MX. Uh, yeah, man, we're going to get some uh, bikes race around a track down here at the uh, Big Sandy Arena this weekend on Friday and Saturday. Um both nights, we have uh, $20,000 worth of uh, pro prize money that we're actually paying out to the pro uh, to the pro riders there this weekend. So that, that'll be really intense, man. They're racing for some big bucks right there. Um, you know, man, we got we got bikes flying, you know, 60, 65 foot through the air almost. Um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of passing, a lot of good race. I think it'll be a really good weekend to come out and watch them racing. It seems like the Big Sandy Arena is just the perfect type of venue for an event like this, just the way it's configured. Um, yeah, man, they've actually had races down there for the past 25 years. It's been under another promoter. We um, This is actually the first year that we've been to Big Sandy. We've done the indoor racing for about uh, four or five years now down in Pikeville. Um, we have a series this year. Our first race was in Beckley. Then we went to Lexington, Pikeville, and now we're here at Huntington for the uh, fourth round, uh, which will be uh, races seven and eight for the uh, for the series. So, big crowd expected, I'm sure. Uh, it's it's something that I think a lot of fans, once they get in, kind of get a feel for it. Uh, they see why this is such an exciting thing to be a part of. Oh, definitely, man. It is, um, it's, a, it's a family sport. Um, you know, once you get into it, you're, you're stuck. It's in your blood. I've been doing it since I was four years old. My very first race was actually right here at the Big Sandy Arena. Um, I can remember it like it's yesterday. I remember uh, talking to Donnie right here about it. Uh, when we was over starting on Monday. So it was a uh, really cool experience to uh, come down and watch watch them do it. it uh, they started, uh, like I said, I was four. My first race was five. Um, so they'll be five years old, and I think Robbie Horton, he's 
what almost 40. he's almost 40 years old down there and he's actually won a couple of our pro races you know against the pro guys so i think uh you know it's, it's really cool man it's got a wide variety of uh different riders out there okay so you were racing at that age so how young were you when you actually got into it because you just don't walk up and go i'm gonna race or do you yeah that's kind of how it did work um <laughs> uh we um my parents owned a business and I was riding around on the truck with my dad and uh, we stopped into a motorsports place, you know, to, to sell to him. And, um, we passed a dirt bike and I was like, dad, that's really cool. You know, I want one of those. And he's like, Oh son, you don't need that. Blah, 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 blah. And, um, it was close to my birthday. I think it was about a month away. And uh, on my birthday, man, I got home. There was one sitting in the garage. He said, well, happy birthday. There you go. And, uh, we got into it. We had a little bit of influence from uh, one of our friends. Um, he, um, you know, his son used to ra- race and stuff, and uh, he, he kind of influenced my dad to get, him, get get me one. So that's how it kind of started right there. And then we came down here. I rode a little bit, and then we came down here. I don't know. My birthday was in November. I think that race was in January or February. So that gave me about four months. I think it was about a four-month spread right there. And you won, right? No, I actually knocked out my two front teeth. <laughs> went to the first qualifier, went to the first turn, knocked out my two front teeth. But here I am, 17 years later, still kicking and doing it. And you said, hey, that was so much fun, let's do it again. Definitely, man. It's always fun. I mean, when you get uh, you get on a bike, man, the biggest jump I hit was about 145, 150 foot. Um, and that's on a 450cc bike. And, man, you're just, you know, there's not a feeling like it. You know what I mean? I'm terrified of heights. And a lot of people find that funny because, you know, I'll fly, you know, 50 foot through the air hitting that stuff. But, uh, you know, it's really cool. It's a different feeling. You know, I hate airplanes because I'm not in control. But on a bike, you know, I'm in control of everything i do and it's a little different but uh it's definitely a lot of fun i enjoy it i love it okay so usually you're not doing this indoors instead uh you're out probably uh, wherever you can find terrain outdoors uh, but what's um what makes the indoor version uh, exciting because I, I know outdoors you could probably hit some really pretty high air if you really put your mind to it well um i actually just came back from indianapolis this past weekend and uh, i was racing at what's called the supercross futures um supercross is a bigger than what we're doing they're the um they're kind of like the nfl version of what we're doing um so um but i went there and raced the amateurs on on the sunday which still is a bunch of fast riders you know they're going to follow the fast crowd and um it's uh that type of track is a little different than what we have because it was so um it was kind of sketchy in my opinion uh, it was it really was man i mean everything was just it it was kind of will take your money and go you know what i mean they really didn't care about the amateur style and where we're more of amateur based you know we have a little bit more put into it and um you know motocross is more of a natural terrain you follow the way the hills go um arena cross super cross you know you, you start with a flat grade you fill it in, and then you start building your jumps from there because obviously you can't race on a concrete floor, you know. So it uh, it takes a lot more time. I think it's a l- um, little bit more uh, thinking to it. You know, on a motocross track, I mean, you jump on a dozer or a tractor with a tiller, you just go around the hills and, and you know, ride what you feel. And um, so there's a little bit of a difference there. But indoors, you can you can hit some pretty big stuff indoors, man. In uh, Lexington, the finish line was, uh, I think it was like, 60 foot or so but i mean it was throwing them a, a solid 40 foot in the air i mean it was launching them you know and that's what we're going to go for again this weekend so you know come down if you're sitting up there and what would that be like section i don't know i'm gonna say like section h or g it's about midway i mean you'll probably be eye level with the riders you know if not maybe a few more sections up you know what i mean so that'll be pretty cool okay so this is the one time getting a high seat's actually going to be better I think so, yeah. In my opinion, yeah, you'll be able to look them riders right in the eyes. They hit that finish line, you'll see some in pros look over, give you a thumbs up, man. You'll look them dead in the eyes. Cameron Farmers joining us, Tri-State MX. How much dirt do you think is actually going to be brought in? That's a question. Cool, we've I'm already curious. got it. We've already got it all brought in. It was 100, 130 truckloads and then a truckload of sand. Um, they brought in the last few loads this morning, actually. They had uh, the excavator broke on them twice yesterday. Um, Riley Development did a really good job, you know, helping us out, getting it moved in. So, um, you know, uh, old man Riley jumped right on it. He got us some hydraulic hoses, got the excavator fixed, and, and we started moving more dirt, man. We got her done. Okay, I'm curious, what's easier, bringing it in, obviously, because afterwards the cleanup, bringing it out, how how's that work? Because I know it's easier just to put the dirt in, right? Um. Honestly, we do the bringing in, and then usually the people that we contract to bring the dirt in, they take it out. Okay, so, so you're out. You're done. Yeah, we we build the track. I think it's harder to take it in. 
Um, because you got to place it in certain areas. You know, that's 130 dump truck loads. You got to figure out where to put them. You know, in 15 hours, roughly. Um, so you know, you got to build a track, stack it here, stack it there, move it here, move it there. So I taking it out, you put it in a big pile and kind of dump it in the trucks the way I would figure it. Um, so I think it's a little harder putting bringing the dirt in definitely. <laughs> That the most uh, what's the most dirt you guys have brought in? I mean, I'm sure with the arena size like this, like, this is the Lexington? biggest. It was I think 150 to 160 truckloads in Lexington. Okay, we had. and that one took. Dad, Donnie was up. I mean, he was up for 36 hours trying to get that dirt. So it uh, they were a little bit slower. It was a little bit further away. Um, of course, the dirt right here is right on the side of the flood wall. But you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, we definitely uh, we definitely bust our butts trying to get this done. Doing doing what we you know, doing what we can. Cameron Farmers joining us, Tri-State MX. So um, where's the passion for you still? You're still racing, right? You're still oh, going to be on the bike. Yeah, definitely. 17 years. I don't see myself getting out anytime soon. Um, a lot of people that have got out end up getting right back in. I mean, it's um, it's, 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 it's it's really just something that once it gets in your blood, man, it's it's, it's really it's hard, to, hard to get out. You know, it's motorsports. Anybody that's ever done anything, motorsports is uh, – you know, knows knows what it's like. I played basketball. I wrestled. You know, I played a little football. I did that, but nothing grabbed my attention quite like taking you know a two hundred pound piece of metal, forty fifty foot through the air. You know, it's you know it's, it's a cool feeling. It's it's a really cool feeling. Being in the middle of all the crowd. You know, it's more. It's not as much of a team sport. Um, I mean, it is because obviously you have your mechanic, you have your drivers, you have you know, but you know, I have me and my dad, and then two or three other people, you know, that help me with my bike. Whereas as a team, you got a coach, nutritionist, you got this trainer, that trainer. You got to rely on this player to do that, for this player to do that. You know, where motocross, if once you're on the track and your bike's running good and you can't blame it on your bike, it's you, you know, and it's it's all you. And that, that's your only excuse. So if you're failing, you know, to work on yourself and there's nothing more than that. You can't blame it on anything. And that's that's what I like about it. You know, it's a really good discipline sport. So your, uh, your racing passion is there. What made you decide that... You want to be behind the scenes putting something like this together. Um, me and my father, Ronnie, we have a big heart for it. We, um, He owns a business. Um, we are, let me see here, we've had many bad experiences racing all over, not any people in particular, you know, and, and we think we can do, I hate to say it, oh gosh, I think we can do better, you know what I mean, like you you know, you live to try to change things for the better. You know what I mean? And, I, and we have what we believe to be a better view on doing this than maybe they had. And so far, it seems to be working out. Our followers that we do have, you know, a lot of them went to Indianapolis this weekend to a professional event and were very um, disgruntled by what they got. You know what I mean? The um, Just the, the, the organization wasn't there. They weren't organized. They didn't move things through. They were supposed to start at 11, and they started at 11.45. If we started at 11, we're starting at 10.59. You know, I mean, we're, you know, we're just, you know, we like to do things a little different. You know, we like to move along, and, and it seems to be working. We're just trying to get a bigger following. You know, we have um, we have a good rider following. Um, we're trying to, you know, grow that as well. We have uh, Motivated right here with Donnie, you know, helping us out, trying to get us some riders from down south, um, doing a great job helping us with the tracks and stuff. And, um so yeah, I mean, it's just uh, I don't know, man. It's just it's cool. It's a cool sport. I don't know. I've been around it my entire life. I don't know. Okay, so for uh, for folks who uh, still um, maybe haven't heard that this is going on, um, tell them how to to be a part of this. What they need to know when to show up. Because obviously, if uh, they show up after uh, a certain time, they're they're going to be late. Because it sounds like you guys are going to be running on time. Oh, uh, definitely. Yeah, um, man. We're actually having on. Uh, uh, Friday, everything kicks off at uh, practice, pra- practice is starting at 11, and uh, you can come and watch that. You can come down and buy a pit pass if you'd like. You can get in and watch that. Um, and uh, if you want general admission, which I think starts at 6 or 6.30, um, you get a ticket at the front gate, just like you would at any other show. Um, then on Saturday, we're actually having a live band and a pit party. Um, that's actually kicking off an hour earlier, so that's at 5 o'clock. Um, so you want to get down there a little bit earlier on Saturday. Uh, get make sure you get your tickets on that one. We're actually, like I said, we're having a live band, um, so that'll be really cool, man. Full pit party. You get to meet the pros. You get to meet the riders. We have meet and greets and everything. So it's um, it's not just a race. I mean, we're actually putting on a show. We're putting on an event. You know, we're not down here just taking dirt, you know dirt bikes around a dirt track. I mean, we're we're 
we're giving people what they paid for and what we feel like they would want out of a really cool motorsports event. Where are you at on social media so uh, folks can start following you and uh, find out about everything you guys are doing? Um, you can find us at Tri-State MX on Facebook. Um, I myself have a Facebook, Cameron Farmer. Um, you can find me at Facebook, uh, Instagram. Um, I try to keep, you know, share and update on that as well. Um, but mostly everything is just on our Tri-State MX Facebook page. It's been fun uh, talking to you, man. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Uh, I'm excited for this. Is uh, sounds like it's going to be a, a great event and uh Let's hope this is like the first of uh, many times that you and I get to talk over the years. Definitely, man. It was really cool. I was down here Monday talking, and uh, you know, it was really cool. It's cool coming down here talking to y'all. Y'all are cool. I you appreciate it. You got to talk it. to Big John over on yep. uh, our sister station. Yep. Yes, I did. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Which interview was more fun, this one or, or his? Go ahead. Yeah, you, you you won't hurt my feelings. No, this one was a little more live. His was a little more, um, we got to record and then air it, so this, um, I don't know. I don't know how many people's listening. That's probably a good thing. I guess this was a right. safety net. We had, yeah. There's no safety net here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's it goes we go. So uh, this one was cool. I like it. it's a different experience. So I, they're they're different. They're cool. They're both cool. Spoken like a well trained promoter. Excellent. It's kind of like going to the aquarium and the zoo. I mean, yeah. they're both cool, but they're different. You know. Okay. I know which one's the aquarium, and I know which one's the zoo. You, you yeah. I wasn't gonna say that, but you picked it. Yeah, I picked it. Um, <laughs> The nonverbal cue that no one else can see where my fingers are going for the zoo. Is the other office. Yeah. Oh, that's we'll just the say zoo. That. Yeah, we'll just say that one. Yeah, that's office. definitely. Well, you have a big window here, Seth. Right, this us. is sort of the aquarium. So who's the fish? Um, I think we're both sharks, man. <laughs> I think we're both sharks. There we go, swimming around. Yeah, we're both in our own our own glass booths because we're apex predators. We're sharks. Right. Search around. I like it. Uh, good meeting you, man. Thanks for yes, coming sir. in. Nice meeting you, Paul. Y'all have a good day. All right, we're going to come back and talk a little bit about Marshall basketball. We've got Dan D'Antoni comments. We've got John Elmore. Uh, we'll hear a little bit of his uh, conversation with Hoppy Kircherville earlier this morning on Talk Line on Metro News, all when we continue with today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Buckle up. Paul Swan has the wheel on The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're recapping last night's victory. First round CIT Marshall defeating IUPUI 78 to 73. Some kid named Elmore broke a record last night. Some kid named CJ Burks, he was able to uh, move in the top five all time scoring at Marshall University. So, pretty much, great night for both of those young men. The team got the victory, they got it. A trophy. John Elmore got an MVP trophy as well. The Jim Phelan Classic. Didn't even know that that was a thing until a few days ago, but the kids were happy to get that trophy. They were posing with it and everything. I mean, they were excited. Talking to Tavion Kinsey yesterday, he was excited. They want to go play as many games as possible, and so does John Elmore. Uh, We'll hear more from him in a little bit. Dan D'Antoni, want to get his comments on the victory last night. And, of course, Dan was just happy to, to get this one and go play another one. Our MVP, besides John, was a crowd. I, I let you know you got basketball town. And they're, they're supporting this team. In fact, one of the two of the referees came up and said to me, man, what a crowd. You know what? I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart. They'll help build us a program here that uh, will keep growing. And uh, they certainly came out and gave us the extra that we needed. Um, John was terrific. I get a little worried there in the first half. I said, hey, we're going to have to win for him to break it. But uh, he started, he was trying to do too much. I told him, I said, just shoot it, John. Just come down. They back off a little bit. Let it go. When they take that away, then go to the basket. You're not making them play your shot. And he started lighting it up a little bit. CJ had a great game, you know, especially early. He was really tough at the very beginning. Two seniors, and one went in the top five all time in scoring. That's difficult, and very difficult when you your running mate is the number one scorer. <laughs> so, uh, you know, two two great guards. I thought they played extremely well. Tavian uh, gave us his normal quiet. What do you have? 16 points on 8 of 12, efficient as hell, 7 rebounds, 3 assists, and sometimes you don't even know he's playing, you know, but uh, he uh, obviously is becoming a a really efficient and solid player. 
I don't think Jansen didn't quite get it going. Uh, uh, West was tough on the ball. Got a bunch of steals. Offensive games a little bit, but he had he put a lot of pressure on the ball. Gives us a lot of stuff. I don't know what the rebounding was this time. We we talked about rebounding a little bit. 38, 38. No, that's the point. One, one difference. One difference. We can handle that. And uh, just uh, really a, a appreciate being part of Marshall basketball and seeing a crowd like this. When I know that we had higher aims uh, to begin the season, but for them to stick with us, say, you know, we're with you. Rain or shine. And uh, that's going to <coughs> propel this program into a real solid basketball program. Questions? Thank you very much. You got one? <laughs> with all the anticipation of, you know, everybody's talking about the record with John and things like that, how hard is that to manage for a head coach going into a game like this just because you I mean, want him to I, play within themselves? You know, and it's, it's a funny thing about management. And I'm a little different, I guess, maybe. I found the more I manage, the more I screw it up. And the less I kind of, my dad used to ignore some things, you know. Because if he got in the middle of it, he probably had screwed us up. But uh, I think there's a, you know, you have to be careful about thinking you can solve all the problems. And, you know, I've always kind of left it to our young men. Now, we, we preach it and we talk to them about being assertive at the right times and when you have to step up and how much you're responsible for yourself. In today's time, too, where parents and teachers and everything try to do everything for a kid, I guess I'm retro. I expect the kids to do for themselves. And uh, you know what? They usually do a better job than me trying to, to jump in there. So. There's a place, don't get me wrong, there's a place for uh, leadership and coaching and parenting. But there's a, there's a bigger problem when you overdo that. And I just came from a household, that, and John and them will tell you, I, you know, you put the keys on the desk. I don't tell them to take them. They just make it available. And then they have to seize that opportunity. And if they seize that opportunity, we got a good good ball club. If I'm forcing them to take the keys, probably not going to be very good. I don't care what happens. So, you know, I, I want to give all the credit to our team. You know, uh, this is, a, I know, a letdown. They, for them, they wanted to be back where we were last year. But our best practices of the year were the next two when we came back from Southern Miss. And that's a credit to them. And uh, they're, they're loving to play basketball and loving to play at Marshall University. That's a victorious Dan D'Antoni after last night's win over IUPUI, 78-73. Uh, we'll hear a little bit more from John Elmore. Funny you should mention those keys. We'll talk about those keys when we continue here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the March 20th edition drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Last night, the herd gets the victory over IUPUI 78 to 73. Thundering herd now awaiting the next opponent in the CIT. The good news for Marshall won't have to play until next Tuesday, so they'll have plenty of time to get ready. Not wear themselves out because it's kind of funny. This team. Once they actually got a, a good bit of rest and didn't have to travel all over the place, and they start playing a little bit better basketball. So the next opponent, we don't know, but we do know one thing. John Elmore doesn't have to worry about being the guy going after the record anymore, and we'll hear from him in his post game with CJ here in a moment. I'll try to get all of that in, but I did want to get to his interview with Hoppy Kirchival earlier this morning on Metro News Talk Line. You can hear that every weekday morning, 10 to noon, right here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. And the first thing that Hoppy asked him, and again, you can hear the full interview over at WVMetroNews.com, so I'm not going to play everything. But John, of course, um, was talking to Hoppy just about how fun that was, and Hoppy asked him it had to be a, a weight 
on your shoulders. Yeah, that was the hardest 20 points I've ever scored in my life. Uh, it felt like I missed a couple of shots to start the game, and I was like, man, I might not score a point. But uh, my teammates kept feeding me. Uh, coach told me to just let the game come to me and knock down shots and just play my game. So uh, I did my best to not get caught up in what was going on, even though it was hard. But, uh, I mean, getting the win helped out a lot, and uh, I'm just glad it happened. Good question by Hoppy about just how long can this team go. He he just flat out asked, how many more games does this team have? Um, As many as we can get. Uh, I told somebody the other day, I was like, I'll go play pickup at the park if there's a game going on right now. So uh, anytime I get to lace them up um, and just play a game, I mean, that's what I live for. Basketball's kind of became my life, and I've kind of given everything to it. So anytime I get a chance, I don't care if we play 50 more games, uh, I'd be the first one on the court warming up for the game be honest so uh, I've got great teammates who like to play as well so uh, coach D'Antoni and the athletic department that uh, athletic directors have uh, given us an opportunity to keep playing and I'm, I'm grateful now during the conversation Hoppy had a, a great conversation with John as far as uh, talking trash out there and because John said he wants to go out there and crush a lot of the opponents he faces I mean he just wants to go out and crush you and so Hoppy followed that. You can hear that over at WB Metro News on the replay. But after that, Hoppy asked John about if he remembered his first bucket with Marshall. Um, we would have to go back to, I believe, North Carolina Central my freshman year. I sprained my ankle. I uh, had a third-degree sprain my freshman year. And uh, I got eligible to play right the semester. I think we were one in six two and six, something around there. And uh, I think it was a little mid-range pull-up and a two-pointer. And I hit that and felt like the weight just came off my shoulders. I missed a couple of shots before that. I got two fouls in the first two minutes of the game, so I had to come yeah. out. I mean, just the adrenaline, I was on edge the whole game. So when Coach uh, when coach sat me out with those two fouls, I was like, man, this is the worst thing that could ever happen. But uh, I calmly, uh, I calmed down a lot and uh, settled in and, this guy got really fortunate to be put in this situation. And finally, I thought this was a really good question. Hoppy directly asked John, do you have next-level skills? I think so, 100%. Um, I've matched up with a lot of guards in the country. Uh, I've seen some of these guys that are uh, you see on TV all the time, and I think I stack up as well as any. Uh, I think my most valuable asset is I make guys around me better whether that's scoring or passing or putting them in an advantageous situation. So I fully believe that. Um, that's my goal after college. I've already graduated. I'm in bad school right now. But my goal is to pursue professional basketball in the NBA. Um, whether that works out or not, that'll be to be determined. But if that doesn't, I'll try to pursue an overseas professional career. I've got a couple of friends over there. So I want this ball to take me as far as possible and hopefully make a good amount of money on the way. And when that doesn't, ha when that stops happening or doesn't work out or whatever, I want to try to coach college basketball. So I see myself being around basketball for as long as possible. That was John Elmore earlier this morning on Metro News Talk Line with Hoppy Kirchival. The full interview now on their website, wvmetronews.com. So yesterday, of course, big day for John Elmore. C.J. Burks as well as Elmore gets his 20 and then some to break the all-time scoring mark at Marshall University. C.J. Burks gets the move into the top five, and there's plenty more to go as Marshall at least has another basketball game coming up next week. So here's John, here's C.J. talking to the media after the game. What was the feeling when you finally broke the record? Well, it felt good. Um, I'm not going to lie, that was the hardest 20 points I've ever scored in my life. <laughs> Never seen the fans so happy to see me score. Uh, it seemed like every point they were they were rooting me on. But um, uh, it was a good feeling, a lot of hard work. I've, had, I've been blessed to have a lot of great teammates um, that enjoy each other's success. Um, CJ broke top five all-time in Marshall scoring, and I couldn't have been happier. Um, so. I scored, I broke the record, and CJ gave me a hug. Couldn't have been happier. So um, I've just been really lucky to have a great group of guys and teammates slash brothers here um, pushing me every day in practice. Uh, coaching staff has had my back. <coughs> I've made a lot of shots, but I've missed a lot of shots as well. And they never told me to stop shooting. My dad never told me to stop shooting. My mom never told me to stop shooting. Uh, and everybody just believed in me from day one. Um, so. Having people believe in you uh, goes a long way. Sometimes you don't believe in yourself, but I, 
I've fought through some of those battles and just kept pushing. And at the end of the day, I've always tried to do whatever it takes to win the game for Marshall. And whether that was points, assists, rebounds, flopping, taking charges, whatever, uh, I've done that. So I've very, been very fortunate to be in this situation. Is it kind of cool to even have one of the guys from the other team kind of even pat you on the back there after it had happened? No, it was cool. Um, just a uh, very good ball club. Uh, they got a lot of good dudes. Um, and college basketball, you got to get to know everybody just because through social media and sports center and all that stuff. So uh, it kind of turns into a brotherhood. I mean, you're competing when you're on those lines, but you know each other off the court. So uh, it was cool to have them um, do that. I'm glad we won, <laughs> sent them home. But at the same time, uh, it's a great accomplishment. I'm happy with it. But at the same time, we got to move to the next game and try to win another ball game. Did you talk about Skip Henderson reaching out to you? Uh, it was cool. Um, I never talked to him or anything. I know he got into some trouble that we're not going to talk about after college. But what he did in between those lines representing Marshall on the court was unparalleled. So having him reach out and saying congratulations and he wanted me to break the record meant a lot. Um, he didn't have to do that. He could have been mad and said, no, I don't want this kid to break the record or whatever. But um, he said that he was proud and records are meant to be broken and he was glad that I was doing it. So I've tried to represent Marshall in the best way possible. Uh, Marshall's done a lot for me. So I hope that I've uh, done a good job representing Huntington, Marshall, and the state of West Virginia. Excuse me, did you get a text from him or something? Uh, it was a typed letter that um, one of his friends, one of his childhood friends brought from, uh, I guess, from Georgia. And he, he spoke to us before the game, just talked about um, how good of a player Skip was. But then he talked about the mistakes he made. And uh, he didn't want us to go down that track. Uh, he talked about it was just a thin line between doing right and wrong. And, uh, when you're flirting with that line, things can get bad pretty quickly. Whether uh, you've got good intentions, bad intentions, or in between, and once you once you cross that line, there's there's not a lot of times you can go back. So uh, it was really cool to hear him talk about that, just because in college you've got a chance to kind of flirt with that line quite a bit, and just hearing somebody who's experienced it, they've seen it firsthand, talk to us about that, uh, it meant a lot, and it was kind of a wake up call to kind of stay on that, stay stay straight and. Uh, don't do the wrong thing. CJ, for you guys to be in-state guys and come here and move into the top five on the on the same night, what, what does that mean for you? You both have been through some battles together and, and really taking this road together. Uh, definitely from, uh, first off, just from being from West Virginia, it's, uh, it's a complete honor, you know, playing for a uh, hometown team. So. Uh, that just brings it brings us both. We both have a chip on our shoulder. So, and us just breaking uh, breaking the records. Just it just explains how hard we work. You know, we work unbelievably hard. I don't think anybody really knows really the ins and outs of that. But uh, we work hard every single night. And the coaching staff and our family, they all believe in us. So, having a great support system like that and just pushing us every day just helps us a lot. You know, having covered the high school circuit for a long time as well, there, there's a lot of times that. You know, we'll go out of state and we'll hear, you know, kids from West Virginia don't face that type of competition. How many times did you all hear that along your all's path, and and how much did that uh, sort of stay with you all as you went on your college journey? Uh, it's it's fuel to the fire. Uh, CJ's played all over the country. I played all over the country, and I'll take West Virginia kids to battle any day. Uh, I know we're not quote the hoop state, or we don't get the hype some of these states do, and we're not as big, so we don't have to produce as many players, but. You take the top quality players in West Virginia, and I'd put them up against anybody any given night. That's John Elmore and C.J. Burks addressing the media after last night's win over IUPUI, 78-73. to More importantly, John Elmore, he gets the record. He's now the all-time leading scorer at Marshall University. C.J. Burks moves into the top five. I don't think those two individually would have reached the heights that they have without each other. They're definitely a Batman and Robin. Hell, I'll say Superman and Batman. I'll say that. That's going to do it for this edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Tomorrow, no show. We have NCAA basketball all afternoon, all evening. Again on Friday, no show. NCAA basketball all morning, all evening. We'll have it for you starting in high noon. 
So enjoy all of March Madness. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington. This is your radio home for Pittsburgh Pirates baseball, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.